the previous example we looked at a biomarker that was heavily skewed in this case right skewed and we employed a Shapiro-Wilk test to check whether the sample that we have drawn here might come from a normal distributed population and the p-value of the Shapiro-Wilk test indicated that this was not the case. So therefore we could not use any uh, calculations that are based on such a normal distributed population. However, we found that we can transform the raw data into a data set that indeed could be uh, drawn from a normal distributed population by just uh, carrying out a log transformation. Uh, we just took the raw data log 10 or we could also take the inverse of the raw data and both transformation give us a p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk test that indicates that these new transformed data could be potentially drawn from a normal distributed population. We also found that a square root transformation would not give this no, uh, normal distributed population. What we want to do in this uh, tutorial now is we want to calculate actually the mean of the data that we obtained and uh, compare them with each other. So we treat now our transformed data, either the log 10 or the inverse uh, transformed data, like any normal distribution. And we can calculate the mean for that. So uh, we're just typing average. So that would be uh, the average here. And I just keep the left mouse button clicked, drag, drag it down and get the average of 1.3. And I do the same for the inverse. And so I will get the average of this inverse data set. Uh, we can calculate the standard deviation of this transformed data set. So equals standard. And we are particularly looking at the estimated population standard deviation. So that is stdev.s. That's our estimate for the population. And again, drag it down, close the bracket and get this as the standard deviation. And I can do the same thing for the inverse data. I can also do the count equals count. And the same here, drag it down. It should be 13 data points. Yes, that's correct. And we've got 13 data points also for the inverse transformed data. With this, we now can calculate the uh, margin of error using the confidence t because we can, in this case, use the t distribution because the underlying population is normal distributed. We could not use that in the case of the raw data because the underlying population was not normal distributed. But here for the log distributed and the inverse distributed population, we can do that. So we can do a 95% confidence uh, interval based on the t distribution. So that is confidence t. Uh, we need to put in the um, significance level that is 0 0.05. We need to indicate the estimated standard deviation. That is what we just calculated. And we need to give the number of uh, observations that we have. That was 13 that we've just calculated here. So here we've got the 95% margin of error. 
and we can extend that to the inverse function here. So uh, now we've got the 95% uh, for the log and the inverse uh, function. Now we can calculate, as we have done before, the upper and lower bound. Uh, we just uh, simply add the mean for the upper bound. We add the mean plus the 95% confidence interval, or margin of error, I should say equals the mean plus the margin of error. And we do this for the inverse transformation as well. And we do that for the lower bound. So that is the mean minus the 95% margin of error. And we also do this for the inverse. Now, what have we got? We have calculated now the mean of this log transformed data set and the inverse transformed data set. So what we've got here is the mean and the upper and lower bound of the 95% confidence interval for the log transformed data. So if we actually want to look at, again, the unit of microgram per milliliter for the biomarker, we would have to retransform the data. So we would have to retransform from the log 10 to the normal and the way we would do that is we just simply take the mean that we've just calcul calculated here, our mean, and we would calculate 10 to the power of the mean, because that is the inverse operation to log and we would get an average of 21.22 for our uh, average of the biomarker. For the inverse, we would do the inverse operation of the inverse operation. So that would be one over the mean that gives us the inverse of the inverse. So here we would get from the inverse operation, we would get 18.1. For the upper bound, we would need to, again, do for the log transform data, we would calculate 10 to the power of the upper bound. So here, it would be 31 microgram per milliliter. And we can do the same thing for the lower bound and we just can drag it down. So here we would have the mean of the data of our trans log transformed and back transformed data is uh, between 14.46 and 31.13 with a mean of 21.2. And we can, of course, do the same thing for the uh, upper bound. Actually, we will see that the upper bound turns into the smaller one. So that would be one over what we calculated as the upper bound. So that's 13.86. And here this would be again one over. And that is what we call the lower bound and that gives us 26.12. So what I want to point out is that these transformations that we have done, um, in order to use parameterized or tests that are based on the normal distribution of the population, will give us different values for the mean depending on how and what transformation we are going to use. So for the log 10 distribution, 
when we do the log 10 transformation, I should say, we get a mean of 21.2 and with a confidence interval from 14 to 31, we see that the interval, this confidence interval, is not symmetric around the mean. And that is very important to note that a log distribution uh, or log, log transformation does not result in a symmetric confidence interval around the mean. And the same is true for an inverse uh, operation. If we do an inverse transformation of the data, we get this as the mean. And uh, again, we get a confidence interval which is not symmetric around the mean. And I think that is very important that we uh, bear this in mind. And uh, the same would hold true for a square root transformation. However, as I said before, we did not uh, do this. Actually, it does not add anything because uh, it would not lead to a normal, to a distribution that looked like being taken from a normal uh, population. So this is how we can calculate the confidence intervals from transformed data. And it's very important to note that when we do a transformation, we need to then do all the calculations with the transformed data, but then also re uh, back transform the data into the units that we had for our raw data. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.